Hey gang, in this series I'm going to show you how to build several layouts with CSS Grid. So CSS Grid's been around for a few years now and it was basically a game changer when it came to making layouts quickly and easily. Before CSS Grid, we might have always used something like the Bootstrap Grid system to lay content out on a web page, and you might still use that, but CSS Grid's made it a whole lot easier to do it yourself without something like Bootstrap. And you're gonna see exactly how easy it is over the next eight lessons, because we're gonna build five different layouts from scratch using CSS Grid. So to begin with, in this first lesson, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of the basics of CSS Grid the properties we can use and how it all works. So how to make rows and columns and then how to display content in those rows and columns. Now this ain't gonna be a deep dive into all the mechanics behind CSS Grid. It's just gonna serve as kind of like a primer to cover all of the basics. So if you wanna learn more about it, then I've got a whole series all about CSS Grid that you can check out and I'll leave the link to that down below the video. Anyway, after that primer, the first layout that we're gonna build is a simple multi-column layout like this. So you can see we've got one big featured article at the top of the page spanning the whole width of the site. And then underneath that, we've got three columns of equal width with an article in each one. And it's CSS Grid that's allowed us to make these three columns really easily. The next layout looks something like this. We've got a header at the top of the page, then underneath that, a sidebar, the main content, and another sidebar on the right. So these are all three columns of content of different widths this time. And at the bottom, we've got a footer as well. And this particular layout is commonly known as the Holy Grail layout because it's kind of like a go-to staple layout that works for a lot of different sites. So if you were to have a quick Google of Holy Grail layouts, then you're gonna see a whole bunch of layout designs that look something like this. Anyway, the next one is a masonry style layout, which is basically a grid of elements that all have different heights. And technically, this ain't gonna be 100% pure masonry because the height of each element's not gonna be dictated by the content. Instead, we're gonna give classes to elements to change how many rows each element should take up in terms of their height. But it still looks like a pretty nice version of a masonry grid. And after that, we're gonna create this next layout. And this is gonna be a full width layout with three columns of different widths. But also in each column, we're gonna have nested grids to lay out the content vertically, which is pretty cool. And the inspiration for this design actually came from something I saw on Dribble, this thing right here. And I've just changed some of the images and the text and whatnot. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how to make a 12 column grid system, and then you can use that to spread content onto it however you wish. And this is really cool for when you've got quite tall pages with a lot of content that's displayed in different ways like this, or just when you wanna quickly prototype a design for someone. So that's a quick preview of the layouts that we're gonna make. But first off, like I said before, I wanna do a quick overview of the basics of CSS Grid, just to bring everyone up to speed and on the same page. But feel free to skip this if you already are comfortable with CSS Grid and you just wanna dive in to make those layouts. So then, CSS Grid, as the name implies, allows us to display content in grids on a web page. And those grids are made up of columns and rows. Now, it's totally up to you how many columns and rows you want the grid to have. We could have three columns or six or eight or more, etc. And as for rows, we could have two or three or four or as many as you wanted. And then we can just choose how the content is displayed on the grid by specifying how many columns of width it should take up and how many rows it should take up as well. For example, this element right here takes up two columns in width and it spans two rows in height as well. And we can also choose the position of the content on the grid too, manually. So if I wanted to, I could place this next element over on the right of the grid in the fourth row. It's entirely down to you where you wanna place your content in the grid when you've created it. So we have rows, columns, and the elements placed on the grid are typically called grid items. Another bit of terminology you might come across is the word track, and a track is just another name for either a row or a column. So this first column would be a track, the third column would be a track, the second row would be a track, etc. Every single row is a track, and every single column is a track. We also call the lines between the rows and columns, or tracks, grid lines. 
So we've got these vertical grid lines between the columns and we also have horizontal grid lines between the rows. Now these grid lines have numbers associated with them. They start at one and increase by one all the way to the end of the grid. And they do this in both directions. And these line numbers are important because we're gonna use those to specify exactly where we wanna place our content later. And one more thing, we can have gaps between the columns or the rows or both and these are typically called either gutters or grid gaps. And they're a way to kind of space content out on the grid so that each grid item isn't squashed up to the next one, okay? So that's a bit of basic theory and terminology. Next up, we'll see this in action and go over some of the basic grid CSS properties. Now, before we dive into the code, I just wanted to let you know that I've uploaded all the course files to this GitHub repo right here, and I'll leave a link to this down below the video. And this repo's got just two branches. The first branch is the starter files branch, which contains all the starter files and code for the different projects that we're gonna be making. And the second branch is the final files branch, which contains all of the final code for the projects. So you can select any of these branches up here and then you can download that branch in a zip folder by hitting the green code button and then downloading the zip folder. So in this lesson, we'll be working with the basics folder and then later on, we'll be working through these other folders as well. So then I'm inside the basics folder and to start with, we've got an HTML page, pretty empty, and that's linked up to a CSS file called styles.css. And inside there is just a single body selector and a Google font that we load in as well called Poppins. So let's go back to the HTML page and start making a grid and placing items onto the grid. So the first thing we need to do is make some kind of grid container. This can be any element, but I'm gonna use a div tag. And anytime you wanna use CSS grid, you always need a grid container. And that grid container is essentially just gonna act as the grid itself. I'm also gonna give this a class of grid hyphen container so that we can style it later on as a grid, but you can call this class whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. And on its own in the HTML, it's not a grid. It's just a div tag. It's in the CSS that we actually make it grid later on. So the next thing we wanna do is make some grid items. So content that we wanna place on the grid. And these elements just need to be nested inside this grid container element. And any element directly nested in here is considered a grid item. So these elements can be anything, div tags, images, article tags, a nav, paragraph tags, etc. I'm just gonna add in a few div tags to keep things simple, six in total. And I'm also gonna place a little number in each one as well. So now we should have six grid items, right? And these are the things that are ultimately gonna get displayed on the grid. And we can manually position them on the grid later as well, all right? All right, now the first thing I wanna do before we style anything is just to open this up in a browser so that we can preview the work as we go forward. And to do that, I'm using a package called Live Server. So to grab that in VS Code, just go to extensions and search for Live Server up here. I've already got it installed and it's this one right here, Live Server. And once you have that installed, if you go to any HTML page or right click, you can open up with Live Server and that's gonna spin up a local development server with live reload so that every time you make a change and save the file, it's gonna automatically refresh and show those changes in the browser. So let me open this up and it should open up on a browser over here, woohoo. So we can see that. I'm just gonna move it back over here so that I can do a bit of a split screen. Let's make this half and then bring this over here as well so we can see both at the same time. Okay, so that's how it looks at the minute. Pretty crap, because we just have those six divs inside the grid container, but none of it is styled yet. So now what we need to do is style the grid itself so that all of these things right here become grid items and we can start to distribute them on the grid. So the first step is making this div right here an actual grid. So we can use this class selector over in the CSS. I'm gonna say grid hyphen container. And then in here, the first thing we need to do is, in fact, before we do anything with grid, I'm gonna set this to have a background of EEE, -E -E, which is a light gray, just so that now we can see that on the page and we can see this thing here, this is the grid container, right? And in fact, what we'll do is a similar thing for the grid items. So all of the divs inside here, we're gonna colorize those as well. So let me say grid hyphen container, and then we wanna do forward angle bracket 
and then div to say any direct descendant which is a div is going to become a grid item right and we want to give those a background of ccc which is a slightly darker gray so they stand out as well so now we can see all of these and they all stretch across the whole div because by default divs are block level elements and block level elements all take up 100 percent weight of their parent element okay so we have all those colored as well all right so what i'd like to do now is come up to this grid container and i'm going to give this a max hyphen width of 900 pixels and also a margin of zero top and bottom and auto left and right and what that's going to do is make this 900 pixels in width and sit it in the middle of the page because it's going to apply an auto margin of whatever is left on the page to the left and right so it should sit in the middle so this is the grid container but at the minute it's not actually a grid it's just a div and the way we create a grid is by giving something a display property and setting it to be a grid right so if i save this now and come over here we can see that it looks exactly the same so on its own that's not really done much all we've done is set it to be a grid but what we need to do is define the columns in the grid how many columns should we have and what width should those columns be so the way we do that is by using a property called grid hyphen template hyphen columns and then we can specify all the different columns that we're going to have and what width they're going to be so imagine we have three columns in our grid and we can say 300 pixels, 300 pixels, and 300 pixels for each column. So what this does is create a grid with those three columns of 300 pixels each. And what it's gonna do is automatically distribute each one of these at the minute into one of those columns. So since this is 900 pixels in width in total, and each one of these is 300 pixels in width, these columns, they make up 900 pixels, right? So what it means is the first, the second, and the third, they're all gonna be on the first row inside this grid container. And they're all gonna be in one of these 300 pixel columns right here. So we should see the first three on the top row and the second three underneath. So if we check this out in the browser, we can see that. One, two, and three four five and six let me just zoom in so we can see this a bit easier all right cool now i'm also going to come to the grid items these things down here just so i can say text hyphen align is going to be center and then also the padding of each one is going to be 20 pixels just to space them out a little bit inside and we'll give each one a border as well so we can see where each one starts and ends so border is going to be one pixel solid and it's going to be 777 which is a darkish gray and if we check this out now we can see each one of these grid items right here so they're automatically being placed in each one of these columns that's the default behavior now we can override that which we'll see later on where we can manually assign different spaces in the grid to the items for example i could say something like this first one is going to take up the first two columns in width the second one is going to take up just one the third one is going to skip this section and start here and take up two, etc. So we can do things like that, but the default behavior is that each one of these is now sitting in a column automatically. All right. Now, imagine we wanted six columns instead. Well, we could carry on and say 300 pixels, 300 pixels and do this six times, but that's a waste of time. So what we could do instead is delete this and we could use a function called repeat. And this takes in two arguments. The first argument is how many times we want to repeat something. So for example, six. And the second argument is going to be the width of the column in our case, the thing we actually want to repeat. Now, since we've got six columns now they can't be 300 pixels now because six times 300 pixels is 1800 pixels but the max width of the grid is only 900 pixels so we'd have to have 900 pixels divided by six so we could calculate that out and put it in here or what we could do instead is use something called fractions so i could say one fraction so that means that we're going to have essentially let me just cut this we're gonna have one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. So each one of these is gonna be one fraction of the max width, and that means an equal fraction. So essentially what we're doing is dividing this by six fractions, and each one of these is an equal fraction, an equal share of that width, okay? And this thing right here, when we use the repeat function, does exactly that as well. So now we're going to have six columns and each of those columns is an equal width, taking up the whole width, 900 pixels in total. 
and each item gets distributed into one of those columns. All right, pretty cool, yeah? Okay, so also we could add rows, but I'm gonna show you that later on in fact. For now, what I'm gonna do is start distributing these different grid items in different positions on the grid. So like I said, instead of these automatically being placed in the columns one after another, like so, what we could do is say, okay, well, the first one is gonna take up three columns in width. The second one is gonna take up two columns in width. The third one, one, then onto the next row. The first one is gonna take up four, then two, etc. So we can do that kind of thing. So the way we're gonna do this is by styling each one of these or targeting each one of these individually in the CSS so we can assign each grid item some kind of information to say where it's gonna sit on the grid. So we need to make selectors for each of these and to do that we're gonna be using nth child. So let me first of all copy this selector and paste it down here and then we're gonna use nth child on this and this is gonna be the first one. So. We're saying grab the first child right here, the first div, and we're gonna assign that somewhere on the grid. Now, what I'm gonna do is use the grid hyphen column property to do this. This is how we manually assign an area on the grid, if you like, to a certain element. Okay, so I'm gonna say I want it to start at position one, at grid line one, if you like, over here. That's the starting position. And then I'm gonna say forward slash, and then after that, we say either where we want it to end or how wide we want it to be. So for example, if I want it to be two columns in width, I could say span two, and that means span this element two columns in width. So we start at this grid line one, and we want it to be two columns in width. So this and this in total, all right? So let me save that and preview. And now we can see that this one is two columns in width and it starts over here on the left. And automatically now it's budged this next grid item onto the next row. All right, so let's try something similar with the other grid items. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it down here. I'm gonna change this to two and let's delete this right here. So this time we're targeting the second child, this second grid item. And for this, we'll just say span three. Now, you'll notice I've not added the first thing right here. So I've not added a start position. And when we don't add a start position, it just automatically starts at the next available position. So we don't need to say, okay, well, it's gonna be not one, two, but start in position three. It automatically starts there because that's the next available position. So this will be the same as three forward slash span three. So let me show you this first of all, save. And we can see it starts at grid line three, one, the second one is here, two, and then three. So this spans three columns from that position, okay? So this is the same as this. Save it, and it's still gonna be the same. And in fact, the first one as well, you could get rid of the one because it automatically starts at the first position, save it, and it's gonna be exactly the same. But let's keep that in just so we know what it is, okay? So let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna paste this in again and say third child this time. And for this one, I will say grid hyphen column is going to just span one. Well, it automatically spans one anyway, okay? That's the default behavior. So if I didn't have this, then it would do exactly the same. So it automatically spans one column in width anyway. But let's be explicit just so we can style each one. I'm gonna move on and we'll do the fourth one. So change this to four. And this time the grid hyphen column will say is gonna start at line two. So that's one, two. So it starts here on this row, okay? This time, that's where it's gonna start and then forward slash to say how wide we want it to be. So I could say span two columns or something like that if I wanted to. But also over here, we could just specify the end grid line. So what grid line we want this element to go up to. So I could say here six, and then it's gonna span from the second grid line all the way to the sixth grid line. So let's save that and we can see. So this is the first one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it goes all the way up to the sixth grid line or column grid line right here, okay? All right, let's go on to the fifth one. So change this to five now, and let's delete this. 
And what we'll say for this one is just span three columns in width. Now at the minute, it's right here. So it sits on the same row, but if we add span three, we're saying we want it to be three columns in width. Now that doesn't exist, that amount of space on the current row right here. So it goes to the next row down right here and we have three columns in width. And then let's do the last one. Paste this in, change it to six, get rid of this. And again, we'll say span three like so. Save it and we can see it takes up the other three columns in width on that row. Okay, so as we're distributing these grid items onto the grid, notice that when we run out of space on a particular row, the next grid item automatically shifts to the next row, okay? That's how we get multiple rows in the grid. Now also notice that the row height is specified or rather dictated by the height of the grid items themselves, these things. Now we have a height on these because we gave them padding before and at the minute all of these rows are the same height. But what I could do is come to the fourth one over here and give this a height of 200 pixels and if we check this out, we're gonna notice that this row height now is 200 pixels, dictated by the height of the content inside it, okay? Now, we can also specify the row height if we go up to the container up here, and much like we have grid template columns to specify the width of columns in the grid, we can manually specify the height of rows in the grid by using grid templates hyphen rows, like so. Now we have three rows in our grid at the minute. So what I want to do is three different, or they could be the same values right here. So I could say 100 pixels, 200 pixels, and 300 pixels. And that means the first row is gonna be 100 pixels in height, the second row 200 pixels, and the third one 300 pixels. So if I save this, we can see that right here. And notice also that when we manually set the height of the rows, the content inside those rows stretches to match the height of the row. So it takes up the full height every time. And that's the default behavior of grid items in a grid, in the rows, okay? Now we can override that behavior, and I'm gonna show you how to do that later on. But for now, I also wanna show you another property to add a gap to the grid. So you know like we talked about grid gutters before, which was how we space the columns and the rows out? Well, we do that using a gap property. So I could come over here, and say the gap is gonna be 10 pixels like so. You might also see grid hyphen gap as well, but I'm gonna leave it as gap, 10 pixels, and that means we have a 10 pixel gap between every column and every row, okay? So if I save this, we can now see this stuff is spaced out a little bit. So between every row, we have this 12 or rather 10 pixel gap, and between every column, we have it as well. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's no gap right here, there's none here, inside, these rows where the elements are, and that's because we have the elements sitting over them. So where an element takes up, say, three columns in width, you obviously don't see the gap underneath that element. It kind of spans the entire width of those three columns. But where the next column starts after that with a new element, we do see a gap, okay? Cool. Now, I wanna show you another thing, which is pretty cool, and that is a tool in Chrome, but you can also get this in Firefox as well. If I right-click and inspect a grid, and then go over here, what I'm gonna do is just refresh the page. We can see this grid bubble right here, and if I click on this, then we can actually see an overlay of the grid over here. So we can see the grid lines, for the columns and also for the rows. We can see the rows themselves and we can see the gutters or the gaps as well. So that's pretty nice. It's nice to have this kind of visualization of the grid in the browser, cool. All right, so the last things I wanna show you is how to align items and justify items. So when we talk about justifying items, we're talking about how they're justified going across the columns. And when we talk about aligning grid items, we're talking about how they're aligning going vertically down the rows, okay? So remember how I said the default behavior of these grid items is to stretch the height of the rows, but not also that, to stretch the width of the columns they're taking up as well. Well, we can override that behavior. So I'm gonna come over to the grid container and I can use a property called justify items. I remember I said justify is when we're talking about how items are justified going across. Now the default value, like I said before, is stretch, meaning each item, each grid item stretches to take up the full width of the columns it's been assigned. But you can override this to be a different value. So we could have instead end, 
and if I save this, you're going to notice each of these now doesn't stretch to take up the full width of the columns they've been assigned, but instead they go to the end of the columns they've been assigned. So this is the very end of the first two columns because the first one we span at two, right? So this is the end bit of the first two columns. This is the end bit of the next three, the end bit of the third one, etc. Okay, so now they're all sitting at the end of the allocated columns going across. We could change this to be start if we want as well, like so, and that moves them to the start of their allotted columns. And this could also be center, and it moves them to the center of the allocated columns, all right? So I'm gonna change this back to stretch, which is the default behavior, to stretch across the whole columns that they've been allocated. And we can also do the same thing up and down using align items, like so. And um, we're gonna use the same properties. So the default is stretch, which is at the minute, but I can change this to start. And if I save that, then they're gonna sit at the top of each row that they've been allocated. And if we change this to end, then they're gonna sit at the bottom. And if we change it to center, they'll sit in the middle, like so. So what I'm gonna do is keep this as stretch as well to be the default. Now, you might want it to be that you don't style all of them and you just want to override one of the grid items. So for example, I could come to the fourth one and I might want to align this, this particular grid item to the end. So it just sits down here at the bottom of the row. And I can do that by saying align because we're going in a vertical direction and then self. So align items and justify items up here on the grid container. But when we're overriding individual grid items, we say align self, or if we're using justify, justify self. So colon, and then this is gonna be end, like so. And now it should sit at the bottom of the row, awesome. So I'm also gonna do this with the last one. I'll come over here, this time I'll say justify self, and we'll say end for this as well. So end is gonna sit over here. Justify means going across, remember. And I'm also gonna use align self as well, and that's gonna be start this time, so it should sit at the top right here awesome so there we go my friends i think we've covered enough of the basics of css grid now and i think you should know enough to tackle the projects that we're going to create in the rest of this series so in the next lesson we're going to move on and start our first project which is the multi-column layout this one right here by the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.